Welcome to your UA Light Celestial Insight. Hello everyone, Venus will transit the sign of Leo for a rare four-month stay, June 5th through October 9th, increasing your powers of attraction and love, prosperity, and fulfillment in life. There will be a brief retrograde period from July 22nd through September 3rd. However, the majority of this transit features Venus direct. Venus in Leo is a transit where we become more romantic, bold, and expressive in our affections, aesthetics, and artistry, and desire to enjoy life. It's a time for confidence, creatively captivating others, and getting attention while socializing at events, parties, dating, performances, or even learning experiences. Or getting attention and attaining your ambitions through performances, creativity, glamour, and charisma. It's really about the law of attraction being super amplified. Love languages are characterized by romance and grand gestures that flatter the ego, that warm and flutter your heart, and that signal loyalty and pride in the relationship. And Venus in Leo is known as a very lucky and auspicious planetary position for gaining respect, popularity, prosperity, and victory that has long-lasting results, okay? Rewards for the good that you put out and rewards for keeping people interested, uplifted, entertained, captivated, flattered, and feeling loved and supported and empowered with whatever it is that you offer. And this is because Leo is a very generous, cheerful, loving, and loyal sign ruled by the heart and living and loving out loud. If you are good to them, they are great to you. It is all about keeping the love, loyalty, laughter, and glamour going. Just mutual appreciation and empowerment. So having Venus and Leo for four months, while Jupiter is also in Taurus, is an incredibly lucky boost, making the remainder of 2023 and onward a truly lucky time for faded changes that align your destiny and bring you faded fortune of your dreams. So definitely take a look at the Jupiter and Taurus reading here on this channel to see additional strategic and predictive astrology and tarot insights to help you make the most of these lucky transits. I have to say that with Jupiter and Taurus while Venus is in Leo, it also means an incredibly fertile time, right? So... <laughs> Be mindful um, if you are not interested in um, becoming pregnant or conceiving at this time, make sure that you use contraception because it could absolutely mean <laughs> someone getting pregnant, okay? It's just a very, very fertile transition. <laughs> All right, so with uh, both of these transits at play, it's also a great time to travel. And additionally, any ventures related to fashion, jewelry, creative artistry and entertainment, and beauty and wellness could experience success. And any travel could bring you faded encounters and wisdom for your destiny. Okay, so in this video, you'll discover the personal impacts of this lucky Venus in Leo Transit in your personal astrology predictions and love tarot reading. Pay special attention to the messages for your rising sun and moon sign in any sign in which you have a stellium. Let's get into it. Hello, dear Leos. This transit will be coming through your first house. Venus entering your first house is such a big deal. For those of you who will have this transit through the first house, it's all about your looks, personality, creative, artistic expression, and your style being your currencies to really benefit you greatly from June through October, right? And these also being the things that people notice and appreciate about you and being the things that you also desire to have appreciated by others. 
With this transit, you are likable, magnetic, so attractive, and so charming, right? Wearing your heart on your sleeve, you are easy to befriend, right? You appear diplomatic and very warm in your self-expression, and so you attract others to you. And with your natural charm, confidence, and magnetic personality, you have a way of winning people over to your arguments, which will benefit you in love, career, interfacing with the public, and in achieving harmony or your desired outcomes in relationships. And this is given that Venus naturally rules your 10th and your 3rd houses of career, social status, public reputation, also publishing and exposure, right? Your communication skills and self-expression, and also daily travel and routines and teaching and learning. This transit could be about how you are or will benefit monetarily, publicly, and in career from reinventing yourself in a way that really communicates your beliefs, right, and boundaries and standards. And it's even about how you use fashion, art, and media as a way of personally empowering yourself and others and showcasing a new and improved you. This could be that your body image and express views on identity related to race, gender, and sexuality, or anything else could be really influential in the public eye and even really viral on social media, okay? And the cards certainly reflect this. This is all about reclaiming the spotlight after some time, but definitely receiving the pros and the cons of lots of attention, right? And love from the public eye, right? I see appreciation, new relationships and opportunities and impact, but also envy and rumors and people essentially trying to attribute your success to secret means or some source behind the scenes or even some mentor in your life, right? In some way, trying to suggest your undeservingness, despite your powerful creative talent and beauty, right? And this is what I get with the top row of cards here. We have the angel of love, the goddess of the moon, and then also the hostilities card, right? And so the um, the cards do suggest, right, that you lean on your inner support circle, right? Particularly the wise people in your life who you trust, right? And also rely on your spiritual strength, you know? The hierophant here could be about... Um, how so much of the love and attention you are receiving at this stage of your life is related to how people see you as a source of spiritual strength, right? Of wisdom, of motherly or even mentor-like love and warmth, right? But who's also so attractive, right? And even the people who may envy you, it's because essentially you possess the total package, right? Beauty, talent, work ethic, while also being so likable, right? And so you mother and teach them by being a reflection of the things they wish they had going for themselves. And so you have the power to deflect the bad energy with your power and kindness, um, which is, you know, powerful wielding of the law of attraction, truly. And the cards do suggest that this transit will be about you being career and money focused as you should with Venus coming through your first house while you also have Jupiter and Taurus um, transiting your house of career, right? So definitely watch the Jupiter and Taurus reading for your sign to learn more about how incredibly lucky it is for you in particular to have both these transits happening at the same time and what incredible things are ahead, right? And with this, some people may feel you leaving them behind, you know, as your success elevates. The creative projects you release and your image in the public will have immense attractive power. And romantically, your romantic prospects, partners, and children, or even pets could feel, you know, this emotion of being left behind or not feeling like as much of a priority as they would like. 
or, you know, feeling like they have to compete with your ambitions for your affections, right, as well. And this is because, you know, these transits are really opening a new chapter of personal growth and career evolution and elevation for you. And that also meaning increased travel. And so, you know, with this transit, it's about so many people being infatuated with you, right? And romantically, people even seeing you as a fantasy or a dream pick, right? But if you, you're you single, you or your prospects may wonder, right, if your ambitions, your career, and your views on children could negatively affect the compatibility, right? And I must say that for all of you, having Venus in your sign while Jupiter is in Taurus absolutely increases fertility and likelihood of pregnancy. So use contraception if you are not interested in pregnancy. But for those of you who are married, committed, or even in casual relationships, I'm getting this feeling that you or your partner are feeling some emotional distance, right? And restlessness in the relationship. And that it has been building and mounting for a long time and that it may reach its boiling point or peak or even resolution by the end of this transit in October. And the scenarios vary, right? But children competing for affections and issues with self-love and self-empowerment, expressing love, feeling appreciated seem to be really central to this for those of you in relationships as well. For some of you, you um, or your partner feel like you have to compete for affections because of work or caretaker responsibilities, right? Or because there has been infidelity in the past that has caused distrust, right? And maybe caused ultimatums and then, you know, shifts in the sexual dynamics in the relationships, right? Maybe feeling like you're unable to express love or give of yourself fully sexually after trust has been broken, right? And some of you in situationships, you actually desire more commitment, but someone doesn't want to put a label on it or or claim someone in public, right? And that being a big issue that is causing blurred ba- boundaries around like what is cheating, it causing distrust, it causing resentments and ultimatums. And some of you, again, right, are at this crossroads personally where you like the appeal of seeming unattainable, right? But also like the appeal of seeming like someone's prized possession, right? And being taken. And so this transit is about perhaps you having to do some deeper soul searching about what it is that you really want in a relationship, because any sort of rocky relationships that you may be experiencing could absolutely be a reflection of this in terms of the law of attraction, right? And so for some of you, this is just about privacy, right? If you are a public figure with growing career success in some way and you keeping your relationship private and your public career life separate, And maybe someone feeling insecure about not having the relationship public, right? Given that you are very attractive and um, because of that, you know, people assuming that you are single and hitting on you. (laughs) And for others of you, I'm getting another scenario, right? Some of you have been simply staying together in committed relationships for the sake of children and shared assets while you're unhappy emotionally and sexually, or because you worry that if you leave the relationship, that it could perhaps change public perception of you being, you know, this fantasy and this dream catch, right? And, you know, you worrying that somehow it would send some message that you're not as desirable a catch or, you know, don't provide or live up to this fantasy, right? Or that your life is just not as perfect as it seems and that hurting your ego, right? But some of you have secretly been using your career and other responsibilities as a distraction and a way to avoid facing some mounting issues, right? And even to stash money so you can leave a relationship. And some of you are with someone who is controlling or who earns a lot, right? Some of you may know that a divorce or even you getting married or remarried 
will have some big ramifications for your money, your lifestyle, and maybe child custody battles, right? And so you may be just going along with arrangements. And for some of you, you're actually seeking advice secretly on the best moves to make um, to perhaps get out of a relationship. Some of you are seeking relationship counseling to work through relationship issues here with the, with the Hierophant. Um and, you know, we'll be able to get over any issues successfully with this transit. While some of you may finalize a divorce with this transit and it actually opening up this great new chapter of self-love, you finally choosing your happiness and not sacrificing it anymore um, due to, you know, the ways that you were perhaps sacrificing it because of public opinion, children or or for the sake of a family, right? Whatever your scenario, and I know that there were a lot, but I got so many messages from these cards and the astrology. Whatever your scenario, dear Leos, you will find that speaking up for yourself and about what you desire can go your way this transit, right? And you will find so much loving support no matter what you choose in career or in love, right? And, um, for the sake of any independence, right? And that even choosing what's best for you is best for all involved, all right? So like this video, definitely check out the Jupiter and Taurus video here on the channel as it is absolutely related in addition to the 2023 um, eclipse season horoscopes for the year, okay? I wish you the best with this transit. Take good care. Hello, dear Cancers. This Venus in Leo transit is all about you and your expensive tastes, recreational capital, and being adorned and adored. Venus in Leo will be traveling through your second house. For those of you with Venus in Leo coming through the second house, this is all about personal values, self-worth, your net worth, finances, and values, right? This transit is about a new sense of self-worth, self-love, and understanding of your values and desires in love and life, including cultural pride and also how you continue to grow confident in expressing these and all of these other avenues of yourself publicly via media or creative arts, but also intimately, right? And how you break through a kind of modesty and feel more comfortable and unapologetic about having recreational capital with this transit, okay? This is due to your own growth journey, but also through you learning so much, right? Having your mind opened from an expanded network of close relationships. It's about how your spending reflects your values and your investment in fun, happiness, and emotional fulfillment, but also you getting a return on some investments, right? For example, new money-making opportunities appearing in the areas of literary arts, home goods, personal care products, real estate, fashion, and the food industry. Money can increase if you already work in these areas as well. And partly because this is a transit about your investment in creative ventures paying off or your talents for sourcing or creating items of value and good taste paying off and being appreciated by others. Okay. And with Venus and Leo in the second house, this is also about big bank. Okay. Making more money spending more money, and being surrounded by more money, aka high net worth individuals, or even you getting help from financial advisors or financial institutions, right? This transit could absolutely be about recreational capital for you, right? You investing your time, attention, and money towards more extravagant things like fashion, jewelry, great food, and cultural experiences, right? Vacations and family vacations. And you just splurging on self-care and things that make you feel emotionally secure. This could be even remodeling or redecorating your home 
buying a new home and spending more time at home and with loved ones. It could also be about welcoming new additions to your home, such as a newborn baby or a pet. And this transit also highlights your powers of attraction through kindness and may feature you receiving extravagant gifts and just so much love and adoration by friends, loved ones, and social networks and overall being a darling in the eyes of people because of your values and the sense of home healing and loving support you provide to others. And some of these gifts could be a surprise. (laughs) And the cards definitely reflect these messages. For example, you have the King of Pentacles showing up here twice, right? So reiterating the financial predictions of this astrology and how you may be expressing more cultural pride, right? And also recreational capital, spending time with people you love, right? There could be surprise gifts, proposals, marriage renewals, trips. They also reflect this message I definitely was getting in the Jupiter and Taurus reading about a surprise pregnancy reveal potentially or a hidden pregnancy or just some important conversations about pregnancy, contraception, and expressing hidden sexual desires with a partner. Now, this is a highly fertile transit for you. (laughs) So for some of you... um. I'm getting this, this is about an important convo of maybe coming out um, as queer or even as not being fulfilled sexually in a long-term committed relationship. We're just wanting to open things up a bit. The cards and the stars definitely indicate this is a transit to sort of spice up your sex life and to even experience some of the best sex of your life, right? Venus in the second house is all about sensuality and sensorial experiences. So you get Venus and Leo in the second house, and it's kind of a recipe for transcendent sex, right? Powerful sex magic and sexual exploration. And so romantically, you could spice up your relationship from dedicated time exploring erogenous zones or sweet talk, right? Things that create a sensory experience while making you feel safe and secure. Or for others of you, maybe this transit and brave people who you love and who are friends, maybe they encourage you to go against your sort of knee-jerk values of staying in a committed relationship just because of sentimentality, right? And instead, maybe these brave people in your circle sort of embody and sort of encourage you to explore and consider new traditions in love. Definitely give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. Drop a comment down below (laughs) as time goes on, letting me know how this resonates for you. And definitely take a look at the remaining videos on the channel, particularly your 2023 eclipse horoscopes and readings for the entire year, and also your Jupiter and Taurus readings for more about particular fates of fortune and destiny that could be in the cards and the stars for you for the remainder of 2023 through 2024. Take good care. Hello to your Geminis. So this Venus and Leo transit will be coming through your third house. And I got the main messages and themes being congeniality, divine discovery, and divine union. Okay, so the third house symbolizes siblings, courage and self-expression and communication skills, and literary works. And so this transit will enhance your powers of communication, right? And you being able to be really sweet and diplomatic in your words, being able to win others over, also being able to mediate and resolve things, whether it's because of your gifts of language or music or explanation or poetics and a beautiful voice or just a diplomatic use of words and compliments and flattery. This is the currency that you will have at your disposal throughout this transit and generally a skill that you may grow more confident in by the end of this transit. So. 
Definitely take a look at your eclipse horoscopes, though, for a special message that came through for you about the sort of shadow sides of compliments and flattery, right? And uh, maybe painful experiences with negative feedback related to communication or even creative projects, right? And how that could be affecting your life and needing attention, okay? That was, it was such a really strong message. So I'm going to just put that in here. But in general, this Venus and Leo transit coming through the third house could be about you traveling, right? Celebrating accomplishments from your recent educational, professional, and publishing successes, and you even publishing projects and experiencing like growing exposure and love. And it could also be about you celebrating these things, you know, with siblings or celebrating these particular kinds of accomplishments made by siblings, right? And you're spending more time with extended family, right? This transit, it's really about you spending more time bonding, expressing love, and doing fun things in your daily routines, right? With maybe your mom, your siblings, your extended family, and even pets, right? And these things renewing and supporting you emotionally. And you prioritizing and balancing these things more in your daily lives. And I'm getting that for some of you. If you look at this a strength card here and the King of Cups card here next to it, there's a message here about your pet, especially a cat or a dog, being your soulmate, okay? And just you spending special time with your pets during this transit. I got a message too related to this card about the golden child, right? So that may be a dynamic that comes up um, for some of you in your attempts to reconnect or spend more time with siblings or children. This transit might amplify like subtle and underlying tensions or like some sort of old wounds between you and siblings and your mother or mother or mentor figures. Uh, related to like comparisons or any competitiveness or insecurity or or projection dynamics, right? And just these tensions coming up related to being able to be celebrated or celebrate the other, right? Without unproductive comparisons. And it's like whether that is actually the dynamic due to like you know dynamics that were created by the people in your family or even parents or just a projection that you all sort of have to interface with um, due to projections from outsiders. I kind of got that as like a message or a dynamic that could be coming up. Um, but Venus naturally rules your 12th and 5th houses. And so this transit is also about your own self-expression and Venus and Leo bringing you rewards for spiritual growth and anything creative, right? Related to music, healing, or even mysticism. And it's about enhancing your identity and intuitive development in a way that may shock you, right? That may sharpen and clarify your own unique point of view intellectually, intuitively, and artistically, and have you come to a place of more empowerment and confident in expressing your point of view, right? This transit is going to bring you in contact with teachings, vibrant dreams, spiritual insights, self-understanding and just higher understanding, right? And feedback in a way that will truly enhance any sort of literary, creative, or multimedia projects that you create in the future. I'm also getting that like this chance is going to like bring you in contact with people, um, particularly like divine feminine figures that really mirror or reveal to you like powerful information or a power or a potential that you have and that you haven't unlocked or fully harnessed or integrated yet for your future. And just in general, like these aren't romantic encounters, you know, that I'm getting from the cards for uh, a lot of you. It's like it's incarnations of like goddesses and like higher spiritual entities and like you coming into contact with like pieces of your soul from past lives. And um, in fact, you know, the cards and the stars are encouraging you to try to carve out as much 
alone time for healing, observing, listening, learning, uh, downloading messages and, and, and inspiration, and also just spiritual integration, like carving out as much time for these things as you can. Because I'm getting that with this transit, you'll be receiving like knowledge to create like visionary things like and to draw down like a higher level of like light insight and vitality in the body in preparation for when Jupiter travels through your sign in 2024 to 2025 <laughs> and um you know this in particular is definitely for you know like those of you who are fellow mystics artists artists um and even like tech geniuses I'm getting that like just this Venus and Leo transit is going to be really really powerful um, for those of you who do spend a lot of time with people, this transit will also be about you looking realistically at what it might require for you to come to that place of empowerment and, and confidence, you know, and like insight if you aren't there, right? Thinking about the need of solitude to like heal your heart and develop higher discernment and self-trust and self-reliance in like your voice, you know? And it's like, I'm also getting, you know, this question of like, do you need an audit of your circle or just time with people like family who know and love you the most for you to really grow um, more empowered and like confident in your point of view and your voice and um, in developing like some sort of inspiration for something that you're going to be creating. And um, in terms of romance, the cards suggest that many of you have been single for a long time, um, you know, coming into union with yourself and the divine and like just healing the mind, heart, body, and spirit. And for others, it's like if you are healing from a more recent heartbreak, it was about the divine guiding you towards this journey of coming into union with yourself and the divine and, you know, healing the mind, heart, body, and spirit. And for the Gemini Collective overall, it's like the message is just like so clear that um, your last major relationship was a twin flame relationship to sort of teach you a lesson to know and honor your self-worth and your self-respect and to really sort of surrender to heart healing and crown awakening that would introduce you to a higher vision of your potential and just your true purpose. And, you know, this potential and true purpose being something that your past partner never would have fit into if you're really honest with yourself, right? And it's like you wouldn't or you wouldn't be able to grow into this potential with them um, and you can't grow into this potential with them. And for those of you, you know, just beginning this sort of journey, it's like the experiences that I mentioned earlier will be showing you this, right? And it's like for light workers who have been on the path or in solitude for a while, your union with the divine is like just going to be heightening and expanding. And it's like you're going to be given clarity about like sacred places that your soul is calling you to um and they're going to be sending you like divine platonic partners to help you with certain things um as opposed to a particular kind of focus on romance but it's definitely going to be about just this really you coming to this really pivotal point in in your spiritual journey and in your life right where you're going to be elevating right and um, we have the elevation card here at the bottom and it says you are making the conscious decision to make to raise your vibration of love and trust it says you have a strong connection to your soul's loving voice and have faith in your intuition and it says you are able to feel a loving balanced connection with everything in the harmony card right and it's like so that's just that's really what i'm getting i'm getting that um with this venus and leo transit because venus naturally rules your 12th house and your fifth house there's so much of it is more just about divine union with yourself and with like the divine right and you having expanded creative, mystical, and intuitive gifts related to some experiences and some things that are going to happen for you from June to October. So definitely like this video, subscribe to this channel, 
let me know in the comments how this resonates for you and come back and let me know what happens for you during this time. Definitely take a look at the Jupiter and Taurus reading and the 2023 eclipse season readings for you also related to the rest of 2023 for additional insight and for you to just see how all of these sort of long-term and big transits are going to be impacting your destiny and fortune and future in big ways thanks so much for watching Hello, dear Taurus. So this Venus in Leo transit will be going through your fourth house. For those of you with this transit going through the fourth house, there's a focus on your rebirth, renovation, and also cutting the tide that binds in some love relationship cord, okay? And <laughs> Venus and Leo transiting the fourth house is all about you taking some time out of the spotlight and away from some work responsibilities and spending time shopping for homes or in your home and domestic space, focusing on creating balance, beauty, harmony, and peace in your home and domestic life, but also focusing on self-care, your health, nutrition, your physique, and devoted time to a physical rebirth or even health recovery from something. It could be you needing the comfort of your sacred space and care of loved ones around you to provide care while you recover from a health issue. And if you are not the one who's needing to recover from something and enlist the care and support from others, it could be that you are needed to help care for a family member who experiences a health issue, and this perhaps including travel to childhood homes. It could be experiencing loss of an elder, getting an inheritance, or having to make decisions about executing a will or splitting assets. And I have to say that before putting together all of the pieces of the astrology and looking at it closely, um, I got strong related messages with the card reading alone. Okay, so for instance, after pulling the cards, I got a huge wave of nausea and sadness in my body and had to take time away from even finishing the reading, right? And so this was a way of me receiving a few different messages, right, related to some of what I just told you. So I got the messages, deep health purge and rebirth, emotional purge and energy cleansing, uh, revenge body, and being in the process of transforming your body, um, maybe having some issues with consistent health routine or issues with your health routine, and overall this message of physical rebirth, healing body image wounds, and even healing a relationship to food. And then the nausea and sadness was also a message related to the first three cards here that came out in the spread, right? And um, if you look here, we have the patience card, we have the sun in reverse, and then we have this card that says adjacent possibilities. But this patience card looks like an elder right in front of the moon holding a clock in front of the solar plexus chakra which is our life force center and you know having the sun in reverse and then uh you know the adjacent possibilities card also looking like a hospital or a nursing home hallway i heard the message grandmother spirit and so there being a message about visiting your grandmother you haven't seen or spoken to in a while, um, having a grandmother who's sick um, in a hospital or a home, and visiting your childhood home, visiting this uh, elder, this grandmother, and it possibly being a time where they pass into the other realm. Some of you, this nausea uh, was related to a message about pregnancy, maybe finding out from experiencing a lot of nausea and lightheadedness, um, or, you know, this being a miracle pregnancy for some of you who have had trouble conceiving, maybe even a surprise, um, or just in general, if you look at the cards here, uh, we have the three of swords, the moon in reverse, and this justice card, and the justice card kind of looks like the birth of a child, 
<laughs> out of the birth canal, right? And uh, so there's also this message too about maybe um, transforming the body after surgery or childbirth. For some of you, these things could be happening at the same time during the time of this transit from June to October, where maybe there's losing an elder matriarch and the birth of a baby in the family. Um, and, you know, these psychic messages map onto certain aspects of this astrology. The fourth house can symbolize mothers, elders, and the afterlife in early childhood or family homes, right? While Venus naturally rules the sixth house of health, right? For uh, those of you who are Taurus rising. And so the patience card here doubles for me as a... Uh, patient, right? As in patient care. And um, yeah, just relates to some of those messages. And so if any of you do experience uh, this particular kind of loss of a grandmother or some sort of elder who is close to you, my condolences. These cards in this transit could also indicate, you know, that if you have been visiting properties or looking to buy properties or seeking to redecorate and enhance the look and feel of your home, that you may have uh, luck finding the perfect place or completing a renovation or design project at about the end of the summer or the beginning of fall, right? And, you know, that's also with this uh, adjacent possibilities card here, right? With all of these different doorways and then the patience card. But in general, I see this Venus and Leo transit being a time when you could be planning travel um, and extended stays in beautiful places, uh, taking these particular kinds of trips and also making long-term physical transformations, right? That will rejuvenate you and just have long-term positive effects on your self-esteem. And this is definitely related to your love tarot reading, where the cards show that many of you may be currently healing from a heartbreak, a divorce, or finally cutting the cord from an intense twin flame relationship, right? And, uh, you know, this Venus and Leo transit being a time where you will experience a sort of powerful physical rebirth uh, to complete your healing and come to an understanding of what you really want your love and domestic life to feel like so that your heart is, you know, healed and open to call in your best love. Okay. So in terms of the messages here related to romance, I'm getting that regardless of how long ago this sort of uh, twin flame relationship was, uh, you all will know which one it is that I'm talking about, right? In many ways, um, there's this message here that the standards and pace of your lifestyle and even your commitment to health has affected your compatibility with this past uh, lover um, or even with your most recent lover, right? And that travel or relocation maybe created an impasse in the relationship. Um, maybe someone wasn't maturing fast enough for you or making certain changes related to their family, right? And somehow family or parenting affecting the success of a relationship. Maybe certain loyalties or boundaries not, not being, um, not being clear or um, in the best interest of your feelings or just the success of the relationship. Definitely seeing something here about different visions for your domestic lifestyle or residence location. Um, yeah, definitely just in romance, right? There haven't been some sort of missed opportunity, right? You maybe being the one that got away. And in some ways, right, you haven't kept the door open for this person deep down, right? Like hoping that they would take action and fight for the relationship. And, you know, the fact that they didn't, you know, broke your heart. But there being, you know, in the cards, this message that, you know, you chose yourself in your highest destiny and you keep choosing that, right? And um, for some of you, this is about your relationship with a parent even. For others of you, this is about your relationship with your child, right? Um, but there's just definitely something here about uh, a telepathic connection still being felt between you and a past twin flame relationship and you 
being able to sense that they want to take action towards you, right? That they still have some longing, right? We have these cards here that says, I feel you even though we are apart, right? And then uh, this unavailable card, right? This person is unable to give you all that you deserve. And so in many ways, even though this person is still longing for you, still wondering about possibilities with you. You know, there is a knowing even on their part that loyalty, integrity, trust, and visions for the future are just totally ruined, right? And, you know, uh, for some of you who had conjoined lives or children with someone, this loyalty issue that damaged your relationship uh, may be connected to a situation with the child, right? Um, but this is all about this transit, encouraging you to cut the energetic cord, to purge, to rest, reset, um, maybe even get some energy work done on yourself to clear your work field, um, and definitely take some salt baths. Um, but overall, right, uh, we have the unavailable card here and uh, the awakening and self-care cards here overall, meaning, you know, to definitely keep moving in the direction that you're in, um, choosing the opportunities that are best for yourself, um, taking this time away to um, heal your body and to continue your spiritual transformations, right? And that even including your physical healing and rebirth, okay? For your long-term success and best interests. So Taurus, definitely take a look at the remaining uh, long-term transits that will be absolutely affecting your sign, Jupiter in Taurus, right? And then also the 2023 Eclipse horoscopes and uh, Oracle and Tarot readings, right? That are all about the eclipses happening in your sign and also your sister sign, right? So again, everything affecting you very, very deeply and personally <laughs> shaking up your life a bit. And also bringing you so much sort of uh, alignment, right? Faded opportunities, faded destiny, right? For your highest good. So like this video, subscribe to the channel, and thank you so much for watching. Hello there Aries. So this Venus in Leo transit is coming through your fifth house and it's such a lucky transit. So for those of you with Venus in Leo coming through the fifth house, the stars and the cards are really spotlighting this theme of you mastering the law of abundance and sex magic and sealing a portal of poverty and to a past life love, okay? Venus coming through the house of children, romance, and Venus naturally ruling your money and marriage houses. The obvious sort of events sparked by this transit could be about, you know, some of you being pregnant, having children, experiencing fertility miracles. For others of you, this transit will be about healing mother and money wounds, right? Through your personal healing journey, through your relationship, taking care of your own children, pets, and yourself, and through you experiencing success as a result of nurturing your ventures, right? For some of you, this transit it is about marrying into money, finding mentors or business partners who help with your uh, business and financial success, right? Or your creative ventures getting more publicity, sales, and appreciation on the internet with this transit. For example, if you work in any of the industries that will be blessed by Jupiter and Taurus, things could go well for you, right? And, and those sorts of industries that I mentioned in the brief intro to this video. So definitely take a look at the Jupiter and Taurus transit video and your 2023 eclipse season horoscopes as well for more about how um, all of this activity, these major transits are 
all really affecting destiny and faded fortune and relationships in really big ways. All right. For others of you, this Venus and Leo transit is about you healing your perceptions of your self-worth, your net worth potential, and also your relationship with your femininity and with your body and sexuality. And overall, this transit could bring a boost to your finances and success and just attention to your creative ventures, giving you more money to travel and invest in your appearance, to take care of children and pets, and it could enhance your powers of attraction and love, business negotiations, and even with court cases. And again, this is because for Aries, particularly Aries Rising, Venus naturally rules your second house of money and your seventh house of partnerships, business negotiations, love, marriage, and um, also legal issues, okay? So the cards give this overall message, right, about this transit helping you to master the law of abundance. And for some of you, right, for instance, we have the magician card here at the bottom. We have the abundance card here that says you've done the work. Abundance flows to you now, right? And so um, for some of you, mastering the law of abundance is about you sealing the portal of poverty and even a portal to a past life love connection, right, through spiritual cord cutting. For others, this is about you tapping into your sex magic, right? And I also got the message that if you are in a relationship and have seen your financial um, or uh, creative and artistic or even career success dwindle in some way, it is the universe's way of signaling to you that you are with the wrong person, okay? that That's a message for someone out there, okay? But Aries... With this Venus in Leo transit, it's like this is your time to really use all of your magician tools, particularly your sensual appeal, your charm, intelligence, courage, attractiveness, and even your pretty privilege, right, to your advantage. And Aries, you are not the type to rest on your laurels or on your physical appearance or even to take the easy route right? You prefer to let your work ethic, your masculine energy of taking actions, and your opinions and your values really speak the most about you. However, <laughs> the message that I am getting here is that because Venus, you know, naturally rules your second and seventh houses, this is about you being naturally blessed by Venus, right? You are naturally blessed by Venus if you have this natural chart, right? And uh, so being naturally blessed by Venus, blessed by women who come into your life. And it's about you also naturally having all the tools of the magician at your disposal, right? To master the laws of abundance, right? Having beauty, brains, talent, charm, original points of view, and a power to both lead and collaborate, right? And it's what makes you a powerhouse. And the message that I'm getting very clearly is that now is the time for you to use it, but also to allow yourself to receive, right? To receive karmic blessings paid to you and to allow yourself to be taken care of by the universe and helpers being placed in your path, right? So with this transit, you know, there's uh, encouragement here for you to romance your life, for you to tap back into your playful, your sensual power, your love of fashion to feel confident and to push past any comfort zone or fear of your power. And many of you have had relationship scenarios and heartbreaks that have given you insight now into how powerful your allure, your personality, your sex appeal, and even your wealth potential, right? They've given you insight into all of this. 
and also insight into how much more powerful it is when you don't seek external validation, when you direct your energy toward your goals. And in fact, your natural confidence in the way of not seeking external validation, right, while you have all of these other tools, is what actually makes you so powerful and attractive in a way that is different from Leos and Libras, right? There is no comparison to you, Aries, but your journey and what this Venus and Leo transit is encouraging is to master the specific laws of attraction from the point of view of being the magician, right? So I do have a video here on the channel. It's called the, in, a, in Aries, like Akashic Reading. You'll find it in the Timeless Reading playlist. But it's a video that really gives you some top secret tips and understanding of your power in particular from both an astrological, but also an Akashic channeled uh, message point of view that I received, okay? So in terms of romance, for those of you who are single and separated from people in your past, these people are still addicted to you and can't stop thinking about you. And that is coming through so very clearly here in the cards, right? But this also includes family, old friends, in addition to old lovers who may even currently be in new relationships, right? There's just this really overarching message here that I got that people who treated you like an option are now living with regret, realizing that nothing compares to you, right? Your old lovers, right, particularly old uh, past life love, twin flame love, you'll know who I'm talking about, right? This person in particular, right, it's like they cannot stop thinking about you. They miss your sex. They miss your scent. They miss seeing you. They're addicted to you, but they mistreated you and took you for granted. And they're coming to realize how they could have had everything with you right? Love, fun, a family, and a prosperous life, a particular kind of lifestyle. And they've been trying to find you and others, right? And trying to find a purpose now that they can't be a parasite or even a passenger on your train, right? If you look at this Ace of Cups and see the Seven of Cups, right? below it, right? This is like them realizing like all of these other fish in the sea. It's like, there's nothing that compares to Aries, right? This Ace of Cups as this, um, as you, right? It's like, you got, you got these starfish, you got the fish, you, like you it, like you, you the whole ocean in one drop. You know what I mean? Like it, you are a drop of, of, like you are the pool, right? regardless of all of these other people that um, people from your past are trying to find in the dating pool or in all of their efforts to try to move beyond you, right? For those of you who are like out of reach, they may be trying to strategize on how they could uh, find a way to contact you or connect with you and be a viable option for you again after they treated you like an option, right? But overall, this transit will be about the stars and spirit really rewarding you for choosing your peace, cutting cords and sealing the portal and poverty mindset and this past life love connection and leveling up your self-worth, right? You being inaccessible while irreplaceable is going to drive people crazy with regret, shame, and keep people stuck for the rest of their life from being unable to feed off of you ever again, right? Um, and I have to say that there are just so many, um, <laughs> I, I've just been, I've gotten so many vulgar messages related to this in terms of like how they still fantasize about you sexually. Like there's so many things, right? Even with the water and, and feeding off of you, like, yes, there's something here about an oral fixation. Um, I'm also getting the message too, that sexual retention could be really, really important for a lot of you with this transit. Um, and just in general related to, um, your ability to really manifest, okay? Because we have the magician um, and the satisfaction cards here 
that are really about this message of you channeling your energy into your ambitions and um, also you channeling your energy into any past life passions of yours, right, that you still love, you know, but maybe didn't have the time or money to invest in before. Um, But there's a message here that like picking some sort of old passion back up, something that is creative, artistic, um, could be really successful, right? Um, The overall Aries, this Venus in Leo transit is absolutely about you um, practicing peacefulness, gratitude, right? And manifesting by cutting old cords, right? And being free of any old ties that bind. Definitely take a look at all of the other remaining videos here on the channel, particularly the videos in the playlist of the current long-term transits that are impacting fate, destiny, and fortune the remainder of 2023 and 2024. And I wish you all the best. Like this video and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Hello, dear Pisces. So for the Pisces and those with Venus and Leo transiting your sixth house, this transit will be all about matters of the heart, health, and family harmony, and the power of you speaking from your heart. This transit will reward you with leadership opportunities, opportunities that require attention to details, writing and publishing, Uh, learning something new, fun, and creative with graphic design um, or branding that elevates your career, and you speaking from the heart to build trust, opportunities, and boundaries with colleagues, employees, or your children, right? Bringing harmony and work-life balance from using skillful communication and working out any kinks in your daily routines, travel schedule, uh, child care, and big decisions with your family. This transit is also about your health, right? This could be about childbirth, fertility, womb health, women's health, and spirituality, maybe even using uh, ancient remedies and wisdom in your health routine and encouraging their use in the health routines of children, pets, and extended family. With a spotlight on the sixth house of health, this could be even finding a new and very wise doctor that is an answered prayer for you, a child, a pet, or a family member's health issue. Someone even receiving good news about a full recovery, a health miracle of some sort. But definitely a focus on children and pet health or children and pets and traveling affecting your health in daily routines. And maybe uh, maybe there being something about travel and vacations with children. Overall, this Venus and Leo transit brings you creative opportunities and big decisions in love relationships where you have to consider your daily life, health, and harmony in relationships and also boundaries in relationships. Venus naturally rules your third and eighth houses, and so much of what I'm getting from the cards related to your romantic life now and how it will be impacted by the Venus and Leo transit is related to you being at a crossroads of making decisions about prospective lovers or current partners, right, based on considering the long term impacts, right, on your future. And There's the cards, right, are really sort of talking about uh, there being a deep love and attraction in your romantic relationship. And if you are single, right, so many people finding you attractive and intoxicating and wanting to be close to you in all sorts of ways because of your personality, your warmth and looks. And like literally, no matter if you are just going about daily errands on the street or making grand appearances, it's like people are in love with you. And part of the allure is the ability that you have to switch it up and keep things fresh. And I'm hearing the words like fresh, fresh faced for some of you. Um, for some, for, for some of you who are single, 
You may be thinking about a love offer from someone because we have the door to romance card here as well and the indecision card and then the wheel of fortune and then we have I want to be more than friends and then the acceptance card here, right? So for those of you who are single, um, thinking about a love offer from someone, you may be unsure because of your professional responsibilities and your busyness, maybe just unsure if you can trust someone's words and needing to take things slow, right? So we have the wait card here and it says the timing is not quite right. For some of you, this person's circle, right? Or even certain health habits are a turnoff for you um, and related to the ways that you've changed your lifestyle. And maybe you wonder if, if it's actually something you can or should overlook, right? This question of like, is it love or is it just sex, alcohol, and drugs? You know, for those of you in relationships, um, romantically, while there is attraction and love, there's a particular kind of uncertainty, um, a question of whether you trust putting something in writing in, um, like, in terms of the relationship commitment, uncertain if you can trust someone's words or explanation related to some sort of issues or questions or even an upcoming important decision that has come up in the relationship. Venus naturally rules the third house of extended family and also the eighth house of trust issues, assets, marriage, and divorce, things like that, right? And so I'm getting that for some of you. This is about uh, co-parenting. This is about family and or marriage and asset planning. This is about, you know, merging families and all of this sort of complex decision-making and trust issues that come with it, right? Um, maybe co-parenting disagreements related to important decisions that affect the child's future or that are related to decisions to conjoin lives or assets in some way because of having a child together. Um, like maybe making a decision to buy or sell an asset like property. Um, I'm definitely getting a message that this could be about with the eighth house, right? This could be assets, um, maybe setting up a money trust, uh, a will, um, a child's college fund. Um, since we have the wheel of fortune here and children, right? Children are important to this partnership. Um, definitely maybe you just dis discussing private relationship matters, with trusted friends or family or advisors so that you can make a smart decision, right? So that you're not making a decision that's based purely on emotion or even making a decision that comes off as purely heartless, right? So we have the four of cups here and the queen of swords in reverse, right? You, this showing, right? Maybe discussing these matters with trusted counsel in some way. Um, but this could also be about that tension of navigating boundaries, right? And for those of you in really strong relationships, maybe having a discussion about boundaries with your partner in terms of you and your partner discussing openly who you do and don't trust in each other's circles, right? Who you do and don't trust your partner confiding in when sharing privileged details concerning your relationship, parenting, and future decisions, right? Something about, you know, protecting and keeping your partnership sacred, limiting outside influence, interference, and even unsolicited advice from extended family and friends and even the public, right? Because it could be toxic, right? And I'm getting that with this intoxicating car. Um, I'm getting that with the indecision card, you know, with this tree, right? It could be about the family tree, right? And extended family. Um, and in general, right, this discussion being important because it could be something that actually keeps the passion and the trust going and growing in the relationship. I'm getting that some of this is about upcoming decisions of where you may relocate and raise a family, right? And that affecting, you know, proximity and distance with siblings and extended family, etc. right? But overall, with this Venus and Leo transit, you know, the cards say to have patience and also to, you know, have the necessary conversations so that you can make intentional decisions in your best interest. 
and you may be able to see the certain changes necessary for you to trust in a future with someone. Okay, so dear Pisces, I hope that this was helpful. Definitely give this video a like and subscribe to the channel and check out the remaining videos here related to how these really big uh, transits like this one, Venus and Leo, but also Jupiter and Taurus, and also the eclipses could be affected your fates, your fortune, destiny, and relationships the remainder of 2023 and into 2024. Definitely comment on this video how this resonates. Come back and let us know how it resonates as well in the comments. But definitely take good care since this uh, transit is spotlighting your house of health. And thank you so much for watching. Hello, dear Aquarius. So Aquarius and those with this Venus and Leo transit coming through the seventh house. This is the house of harmony, helping others, committed love and business partners, and sexual desire and marital or relationship happiness, right? And so this transit can absolutely be about enhancing your powers of attraction in every way. You being extremely attractive, agreeable, charming, and drawing others to you, and even finding or having a marriage partner who is particularly attractive, charming, or well off, and you both getting attention, okay? Venus naturally rules your ninth house of relationships with foreigners or people of different cultures or just non-traditional relationships. And so this could characterize your current relationship or even a future relationship. You may find that your hips and your lower back are special erogenous zones for you and especially attractive body parts of yours to others, or even parts that you want to enhance. With this transit, being a giver, a philanthropist, a peacemaker, homemaker, and attaining peace in your life could be something that you desire and put more of your energy and attention into. Definitely look at your Jupiter and Taurus reading for more on this. But this transit could be a time when all of these amazing things heighten for you, right? Increased happiness and sexual desire and committed romantic relationships. You welcoming a new pet or a child into your family. Um, there being increased money and harmony in business relationships and loyal friendships and just peace and harmony in your life and you being desired by others. Or... Because Venus in Leo could mean excess, overgiving, and shallow intentions, this transit could actually be about being careful not to bend over backwards just to keep the peace in relationships and end up getting taken advantage of, right? It could be a time when issues and incompatibilities and love and business relationships actually become undeniable, right? And when children or pets even negatively affect the trust, the desire, and the balance in a relationship. Or a time when loyalty in friendships is questionable and these lead to rethinking or ending relationships, right? Especially any relationships that were rebound relationships or that were rushed or that were based on shallow or materialistic reasons, right? Like someone just fetishizing you, right? And only wanting you for looks, sex, money, or public image, or, you know, relationships that were trauma bonds, right? Or where there was some sort of toxic codependency or bad contracts. And I'm seeing all of these scenarios in the cards, really, right? The positive, but also the particularly um, negative ones, right? I'm definitely seeing helping someone you love financially, someone's kindness, maybe being taken for weakness. I'm seeing a warning about when mixing friends, family, and finances goes wrong, right? How it blows up. Um, there being a message about losing core long-term relationships because of your glow up or when you glow up, just having to deal with 
how not everyone elevates or grows with you, right? And relationships being fundamentally transformed because of money. And there's a message here for some of you where it's like, if some of you are considering a project with a loved one or a friend, with the uh, period of time when um, Venus and Leo goes retrograde, this project could actually go south in some way, or there could just be some issue with it, right? Um, but definitely there are messages here about transforming trauma bonds, maybe someone having, someone saying hurtful things that can't be taken back and there being regret, or it causing a relationship to end, um, trust and loyalty being broken. Um, and for many of you, this could be about professional relationships, right? And for some of you, some relationship going south actually helps you dodge a bullet in some way. Um, maybe you never really took time to get to know someone well enough. And the way that someone ends up treating you in a love or professional relationship gives you important information for you to actually get out of the relationship before things get deeper than they already are, right? Before there are like children or more assets or something involved, right? Definitely something here about um, someone being uh, dishonest or immature or they're just being red flags that you try to ignore being undeniable, right? And um there's also this message here that I'm getting about um, someone being out of someone's league, right? You are someone else that you are in a relationship with, and that probably and that may be causing issues with the relationship during the time of this transit. I'm definitely getting some um, messages here that some of the particular sort of circumstances that you all could be dealing with with this Venus and Leo transit could be about the sort of pros and cons of being in relationships where there is such a drastic sort of difference in the net worth and income between you and, and others, right? There is something about um, how a drastic difference in net worth and income could change, you know, your considerations of marriage or even business partnership with someone, right? Thinking about the potential ramifications if things were to go south. Um, for some of you, you are someone's cash cow. And for others, uh, you have found someone who is is wealthy or is a cash cow, right? But there is something here about this Venus and Leo transit bringing you lessons, right, from fractured and failed relationships and just relationships where you are navigating um, these sort of uh, dynamics around money, right? Fractured and failed relationships teaching you something important about your self-worth and about values, but also about self-worth and net worth, right? And how they they don't always neatly align, right? So the ways that net worth is not a full or true representation of people's virtues, their character, their maturity, or their self-worth, but also the ways that like gods, goddesses, and even wise people and people with hearts of gold, how they often exist as these people with hard lots in life, right? And, you know, you coming to understand and or just already knowing how virtues and characters are, you know, the true currency and the paths to wealth. Some people could have drastic net worth differences or differences in income and people with no money or less money, you know, providing things that are priceless, that are so valuable and that are worth them being um, financially taken care of or compensated, right? in ways beyond just the sort of structures of a, of the regular sort of like capitalistic system. There's something here about important people in your life showing you that and you also being someone to teach others this lesson. And just in general, you and others being karmic in each other's lives, right? To force you to grow and level up in some way, right? And some of your relationships not being meant to be long lasting, right? Um, I'm definitely seeing with this transit um, 
you getting a new idea for a product or project development. For some of you, this is um, going to be a transit or, you know, your creativity um, is greatly, greatly enhanced, right? And where you may be able to troubleshoot like any manufacturing and shipping issues and experience like greater success. Not related to relationships, but that was the sort of like less sort of psychic download that I got related to some of what I was seeing in the cards. So we have this creativity card here, and it says, you love to devise new ideas, innovations, and forms of illumination. Okay. Overall, Aquarius, I hope that this video was helpful in some way. Definitely give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to check out the remaining videos, particularly the recent videos that give you some insight on how the Venus and Leo, the Jupiter and Taurus, and also the eclipses of the year will be affecting fate, destiny, and fortune, okay? Definitely leave a comment in terms of how this video resonated. Check back and let us know how this transit turns out for you. Thank you so much for watching. Hello to Capricorns. So Capricorns, your message is short and sweet and so clear in the cards. And partly because it absolutely um, maps on to some of the messages that came through in your Jupiter and Taurus uh, reading for uh, the rest of 2023 through 2024. And also resonates with some of the insight that has come through in your 2023 overall timeless tarot message and spiritual advice for the year of 2023. So definitely take a look at the remaining videos here on the channel. Okay, they have some incredible, incredible insight. But dear Capricorns, Venus and Leo will be transiting your eighth house. Okay, um, and the eighth house is all about the law of attraction. It's about deep spiritual and sexual connection, but also big gains and losses. And the cards really speak to all of these things. Okay, this could be a transit where you um, come into some sort of secret sexual affair or um, a relationship where you're expressing taboo sexual desires, right? It could be about a huge loss in love, right? Like a pet, a baby, or love partner, or a divorce, right? In this transit, putting the spotlight on this journey of finding resolve, gratitude, higher understanding, power and just healing from any of these scenarios and, and going through the grief process, right? Romantically, the cards definitely suggest a new deep relationship with self and a new love relationship perhaps after a big breakup, um, but perhaps needing to take the time to really heal, right? And put yourself back together versus, um, like rushing into something, right? Because rushing into something could lead to a whole host of problems, right? This is a transit that is about inviting you to heal fears of being vulnerable in love, vulnerable in expressing yourself in some creative way, uh, heal any fears of being betrayed, and to not just seek a relationship for attention, or to sort of fill a void, right? And try to take the place of some sort of loss, right? In doing these things, you could unconsciously attract a trauma bond, right? So the cards are really clear here. It's about seeing the higher lessons, right? And finding gratitude for the experience, right? This gratitude card here says, you fully appreciate the invaluable lessons that life lovingly presents to you. And um, you demonstrate the truth and honesty of your soul and manifest love with your every action with the integrity card, right? And then um, there's also a message here about 
you perhaps try not to let sadness get in the way of uh, your professional appearance, right? And and responsibilities. And you maybe just like putting on a brave face, right? Um, with this, uh, that's one of the things that I'm getting here with the loyalty card. It says your reliability demonstrates your loving sense of devotion and consistency of being. Um, but I definitely see there being a message here about uh, maybe you trying to put distance between you and someone who you were in a love relationship, maybe trying to break any uh, addiction, attraction or obsession, right? And checking, like checking your messages from them, right? And you may be cutting all connection on communication channels, right? And um, overall, some sort of experience contributing to your creative growth in a profound way. Whatever it is that you learn, whatever sorts of deep spiritual knowledge, healing, transformation, and higher understanding that you come to throughout the time of this Venus and Leo transit from June to October, it could be something that uh, really contributes greatly to um, something that you present to the world. You could channel it into your artistry and it could end up being sort of profound for you in some way. So definitely check your Jupiter and Taurus reading for more on that um, because there are definitely some things that came out related to career and creative art in that reading. Okay, so like this video, subscribe to the channel, check out those other messages. They are absolutely more in depth. All right, and I hope that this transit is good to you. Comment down below how this resonates and take good care. Hello, dear Sagittarius. So for the Sagittarius collective, especially those with Sagittarius on our rising, this particular transit is coming through the ninth house. For those of you with Venus and Leo coming through the ninth house, it's all about you attracting and the divine sending earth angels in experiences to gift you divine wisdom, okay? With this transit, June through October, um, you could absolutely come into contact with powerful healers and helpers to support you, um, to support your mental health, to support your overall health improvement, or helping you grow your knowledge about healing traditions and paths, right? The sort of stream of consciousness, like downloads and insights that I got with this transit is divine intervention, right? We have the leap of faith card here. We have temperance. Um, and I got this message here about angels in the outfield, right? That was the message that came to mind. But definitely something about saving grace, amazing grace, right? Venus naturally rules your sixth house of health and your 11th house that is about like gains. It's about um, social networks, right? And and support groups and, and networks, right? And so I'm getting that. With this transit in particular, you could find lots of happiness and support from family, friends, colleagues, supporting your positive outlook on life, right? And supporting you reaching certain visionary goals, right? And keeping you in touch with uh, gratitude practice and just higher understanding. However, you know, this is a time when you are encouraged to open your mind and engage with people of different cultural backgrounds and to actually go slow in, daily, in dating or put dating on hold altogether, right? Because there's a message here about the right one being worth the wait, right? We have the wait card here. Um, and, uh, you may find love in a foreign place or with a foreigner, right? And, um, there's just a clear message that there needs to be a focus on self-healing and you integrating spontaneous spiritual experiences and awakening, right? And in this way, because of this, you may find that any 
relationships that you attempt, right, to end up being very dissatisfying, unappealing, unsuccessful, right, not up to your standards in some way, right, in terms of your ideals and love. And, you know, that's truly on purpose. Divine love is what you're being encouraged to understand and explore. And, um, working towards your sort of highest achievements and highest potential is also something that the divine is encouraging, right? And is orchestrating right in your life path. And this is absolutely connected to your 2023 spiritual advice and overall timeless tarot message for the year, right? That message is still so very relevant and I'm seeing that here with the cards. Okay, um, especially with this individuality card, right? That is about focusing on the self and um, yeah, and these go slow cards, right? And the judgment card here, right? So dear Sagittarius, I hope that this video was helpful. Definitely check out the remaining videos here on the channel for additional insight and relevant wisdom and messages that are pertinent to the remainder of 2023 and 2024 in terms of transits that will be impacting destiny, fate, and fortune very strongly. Like this video and subscribe to the channel. Comment below how this video resonates for you and take good care. Hello, dear Scorpios. So Scorpios and those of you with this Venus and Leo transit coming through your 10th house, this will be all about you being recognized and rewarded for your leadership and being empowered and empowering in your career, right? The messages came through so clear and are short and sweet, dear Scorpios, right? There have been so many messages coming through about um, particular uncertainty and even losses recently for you all in career or romance. And any loss in career or romance has been on purpose to really bring you something better suited and something faded, right? Where you experience true reciprocity, a true match, and these certain experiences being divine detours in a sense, right? And we see that here in the cards, right? The protected, the weight card, um, and also the longing and the regret card coming up here that really is about, you know, many of you perhaps having, um, suffered, you know, some unfairness, some mistreatment in a sense, right? But these cards are coming here to say, you know, that like people are longing, someone is secretly yearning for you. People have remorse for the ways that they treated you, right? Um, and that everything is about your awakening. It's been in the interest of the universe sort of forcing you to take this sort of leap of faith and to love yourself more um, and to be in better alignment with people and opportunities that would truly bring more satisfaction and reciprocity and honor to you in terms of like honoring your self-worth. But all of that had to be based on you sort of tapping into a particular kind of self-love and a trust in, you know, the divine detour and the universe providing for you, right? While in the midst of any sort of uh, hardship issues and uncertainty, okay? So because Venus naturally rules your seventh house of partnerships and the 12th house, this Venus and Leo transit is all about financial support coming in to help you. It could be from a legal settlement. It could be from selling property. It could be something related to children. It could be related to spirituality um, and you working in the fields of wellness and spirituality in some way. Um, and are even being recommended for something, right? Um, and your reputation sort of like working for you in some way. But in terms of financial support, it could also come from you luring 
or even increasing your prices for something, right? And that ending up increasing your sales with something that you do, um, you'll know. That's that's the message that I'm getting. You'll know how this applies, right? But generally, this transit is asking you to be brave, confident, empowered in demanding what you deserve, right? And uh, negotiating in your best interest in contracts, pay agreements, and et cetera in your career. And that was the main message that I was getting, right? When I pulled the cards, it was about being bold and negotiating, right? Trusting your instincts. Uh, I got the message for you to do research to find out the truth before signing any paperwork or agreeing to partnerships, right? With Venus and Leo, people could be embellishing the truth when it comes to what they offer or um, what they are telling you about what is available in budgets or what is not available with the budget, right? People could be trying to lowball you in contracts. And so there was a clear message that I got here for you to not leave any money on the table. Okay. Um, and to seek your satisfaction. All right. And so the satisfaction card here reads, it says, you let the energy of love guide you to self-approval so that others no longer define who you are. Okay. And so with the six of pentacles here, that is what it is all about. Okay. So dear Scorpios and those of you at this transit in the 10th house, I hope that all goes well for you. Be uh, brave and empowered <laughs> and like this video, subscribe to the channel. Check out the remaining videos here on the channel, especially the Jupiter and Taurus transit uh, reading, the Saturn and Pisces and Pluto and Scorpio reading in the 2023 eclipse season horoscopes for 2023. That is all about these eclipses happening in your sign, right? And your sister sign. Okay. So I hope that this helps. Comment down below how this resonates for you. Hello there, Libras. So Libras and those of you with this Venus and Leo transit coming through the 11th house, this house symbolizes gains, aspirations, wish fulfillment, networks, and friendships. And this transit may be highlighting the need to take a break from romance and any sensual pursuits or people pleasing. While it also might enlighten you on what you really need in your love life, right? You coming to understand your attraction to people with unique qualities, right? Who you can be genuine friends with and needing relationships that possess some kind of unconventional element in order to keep your interest levels high. But ultimately that you need to truly love yourself before loving someone else, right? This message is short and sweet because everything here showed up in your 2023 eclipse season reading and also your 2023 year ahead timeless tarot for the year that offered spiritual advice. So definitely check those out. Um, these messages also came through in the Jupiter and Taurus reading very heavily as well, because this is your sister sign, right? You're in terms of being Venus ruled sign, right? And so Venus and Leo seems to be giving you courage to express maybe a change of heart to someone um, and your true love for someone else. <clears throat> who you're unsure will forgive you or accept your love offer. And it's like, I quite literally got like a, I got like a block in my throat, you know, as I was even like saying that. So there's, there's something here about like some getting up the courage to be really vulnerable um, and disclose your feelings to, um, connect with someone who you maybe haven't been in a connection with for a very long time and um, to essentially seek your true love, right, in a sense, and um, do that 
after perhaps this period of growing your self-love and doing some independent soul searching, right? So those are the messages that I have for you, dear Libras. Be sure to check out all of the additional messages here on this channel, particularly um, the 2023 eclipse season uh, messages. Those are so, so, so relevant for you because they are related to eclipses happening in your sign, your sister signs, and your sister Mr. Venus rule sign, uh, and then also Jupiter and Taurus, and um, all of the other sort of long-term transit videos that are truly, truly influencing fate, destiny, and fortune very strongly at this time of change, right? So I hope that this helps. Like this video, subscribe, comment down below how it resonates for you, and make sure that you check out any additional readings for your sun, moon, rising sign as well. Hello, dear Virgos. So this Venus and Leo transit is happening in your 12th house. For those of you with Venus and Leo coming through the 12th house, it is all about spontaneous spiritual experiences. It is about ideas, opportunities, and circumstances related to work and colleagues. Um, maybe testimony, compassion, and heartfelt conversations that you're engaging in related to losses and misfortune, um, and also making a sacrifice to help someone else and show loyalty and compassion, and that perhaps affecting your money. This transit is also about considerations of private versus public relationships, right? And, and your ability to speak about your desires and not self-sacrifice your happiness in relationships. Definitely discussing finances and incompatibilities or limitations in a working relationship could be something that is relevant for you all with this transit or even discussing desires in a relationship, right? We have the um, Archangel Gabriel who is connected to the throat chakra showing up here, right? Next to the six of pentacles card in reverse, okay? And, and it being about obstacles, also being about in, intuition, okay? And the 10 of wands in reverse, which is all about releasing burdens in a sense, right? For example, with the cards, I'm getting a message about a mature conversation or a breakup where people take ownership and like just realistically discuss any issues in a relationship in terms of like what needs to change to fix it or, or if there's already a breakup, um, discussing why it didn't work, why it can't work going forward, all of these kinds of things, right? I'm getting that with the acceptance card and the ownership card here. But definitely with this transit, and because Venus naturally rules your ninth and your second houses, um, I'm also getting a message here that some of you may have a secret crush on someone who seems spiritual, mysterious, creative, and unavailable, or who is a colleague, right? And this person may also even be a foreigner at a distance from you or from a different culture, right? Uh, or unconventional in some way, and it being a potential conflict of interest for you, right? It may bring up so many unconscious fears for you to deal with related to self-worth, trust, and your values, right? You may feel like your love won't be appreciated or reciprocated, or that you won't be trusted as a cultural outsider, right? You could also be the person who is pursued, um, or crushed on in this situation, right? And this all be reversed, right? And if someone reveals these things to you, it perhaps being a case in which you have to be really brave to state your feelings, um, whether or not, you know, the feelings are, are mutual or unrequited, right? But in general, whatever applies and whatever you decide, this transit will be about reflecting on your views on love and sacrifice and give and take in relationships, right? And about 
being loyal to yourself, right, while also showing compassion. For some of you, this may be potentially having to relinquish some some person or some aspect of an important love relationship, right? As well as like just being brave to speak your truth and seek your desires, okay? Definitely take a look at the remaining videos here on the channel. Um, there has been so much coming up for you all related to you navigating uh work and professional relationships, contracts, and um, boundaries, right, in so many different ways, especially for many of you who may even work in health and helping professions, um, and just a lot of spiritual activity going on for you all as well. And we have this star card where there is literally, you know, this crown chakra awakening sort of happening, right? And that has been in the cards for you all. So I speak a bit more about some of those things in uh, the other videos here on the channel, right? Your uh, March and April horoscopes, but also your 2023 year ahead time this tarot reading was much more in depth. So those might be of interest to you. And then Definitely take a look at how Jupiter and Taurus and all of the other sort of major, major tran transits like Saturn and Pisces, Pluto and Aquarius, and also the eclipses, how all of these things will be importantly impacting your fate, fortune, destiny, and relationships. So definitely take a moment to like this video, subscribe, comment below how this resonates for you, what ends up happening for you during this time, and thank you so much for watching.